medcram.com. Welcome to another MedCram video. We're going to shift our attention from the COVID-19 pandemic to a crisis that is in Europe. News reports are starting to emerge that thermobaric weapons are being used in Ukraine. And the purpose of this video is to educate on the medical side what the effects of thermobaric weapons are on human beings in urban centers. This is not only to illustrate the absolute horrendous effects on human beings, but also to help healthcare professionals in the theater of war deal with the aftermath of these weapons. And a very helpful paper that I highly recommend those that are interested is this paper that was published back in 2000, over 20 years ago, titled A Crushing Victory, Fuel Air Explosives and Grozny 2000. So this is a TOS-1 Russian tank that is able to launch up to six kilometers, 24 different missiles. Each one of these has the capability of being a thermobaric weapon, and we're going to discuss exactly what that is right now. The anatomy of the thermobaric weapon here, you've got the shell, of course, which is in yellow, and it's filled with either liquid or fuel. Sometimes it's ethylene oxide. It's basically a combustible fuel that it is filled with. And in the center of this is the detonating charge. The next thing that you have to understand is that there are actually two detonating charges. The first detonating charge causes the missile to explode in a way that it distributes this liquid as a cloud throughout the atmosphere in the vicinity of the initial detonating charge. This would appear as a cloud of dust or a cloud of mist, which is fuel. With the air around the bomb saturated with this fuel mixture, there is another detonating charge that ignites this fuel and causes it to instantaneously combust, sucking the oxygen because combustion requires oxygen for the reaction to occur. It sucks all of the oxygen out of the atmosphere. Now, as a result of this, the pressure that is generated from this bomb in this area is on the order of 427 pounds per square inch. Just to give you an idea of how much that is, we inflate our car tires usually to around 30 PSI. And the temperature of this blast is around 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And just to give you an idea, the surface of the sun is about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And the velocity with which this pressure wave travels is about 6,700 miles per hour. This weapon is so powerful that some experts consider this to be at the same level as a low-level nuclear weapon. So why would this type of ordnance be needed? Well, this is often used as a missile that can destroy bunkers or defensive buildings. So where there are very heavily reinforced concrete foundations, these types of weapons can destroy that and have been used by a number of countries, including the United States, during the war with Afghanistan, where the bunker buster missiles were used just like this to destroy those defensive positions. What's unique about the current situation is that it's now being used in urban cities. As you can imagine, the pressure from such a bomb would cause internal organs to be ruptured, it would cause eardrums to be perforated, it would basically cause the puncture of lungs, and then the vacuum as a result of this is a tremendous vacuum that gets sucked up as this wave continues to expand outwards. And so what is felt is a tremendous pressure wave and then an immediate suction within microseconds. And so a first responder to such a blast would have to look at this from basically three different zones. Zone one here, directly under the blast, zone two, more in the periphery, and zone three at the extreme periphery. And as you can imagine, the chance of survival goes up as you go out from the center of this bomb. In zone one here, most of the people unfortunately are going to succumb to their injuries almost immediately. In fact, Sometimes, based on where the bodies are, there may not be bodies because they would be completely incinerated. Those in Zone 2 will likely survive the initial blast, but will have severe burns. 
But in addition to the burns that you can see outside of the body, the inside organs may be ruptured because of the pressure wave that has gone in and out. And remember that the pressure wave is going to be most severe on organs that are containing air. So that would be the lungs and the GI tract. The thing obviously with the lungs is that when the lungs are ruptured, that can cause a pneumothorax or a lung collapse, which can quickly become fatal. On the other hand, a perforation of the GI tract, which contains bacteria, might slowly leak out into the sterile area around it and can cause severe infections that can later cause the patients to die of their injuries from septic shock. People in these Zone 2 areas could actually be saved if enough initial medical resources were employed early on. But as is the case in a lot of these situations with multiple traumas and not having enough medical resources, unfortunately, it's likely that those in zone two will also succumb to their injuries. And unfortunately, it's a very painful demise. The paper at the beginning recommends the administration of pain medications in this case if there are no other medical resources. In zone three, there actually may be a good chance of survival. There may be projectiles that they may have been shielded from. If they're wearing bulletproof vests or Kevlar jackets, they may not get hit by shrapnel or bullets, but they're not going to be protected from the pressure wave. The pressure wave is still going to hit them. And so as long as that is well known, you can take these people to the hospital, you can provide care for them, but you need to make sure that the internal organs are not harboring an infection or a rupture that could later cause bleeding down the road. So, so long as hemorrhaging can be controlled and the patients can be watched carefully, people in zone three can oftentimes be saved. So the question is, is how can you tell whether or not someone may have internal injuries that you can't see from the pressure wave? One of the ways of doing that, if you look into their eardrum and see that it's either perforated or if there is blood behind the eardrum, that's usually a good sign that there's also been some damage to the internal organs. This is a perforated eardrum. We should note that this type of weapon is not illegal, but its use against civilians is considered to be a war crime. We'll also put a link to a video of an animation showing exactly how these bombs detonate. So in conclusion, this paper 20 years ago prophetically said that the Russian use of tactical ground-launched thermobaric weapons has taken the wraps off of an effective weapons type that is currently being purchased or developed by a variety of countries. Thermobaric weapons will be present on future battlefields. They will present particular problems for defending units or units bunched up on complex terrain such as forest, jungle, or cities. Medical units will face problems treating mass burn and crushing injuries. Technology offers no quick counters, so unit survival may depend on tactics and drills, improve counter-battery procedures, and the use of camouflage and deception measures. Join us at medcram.com for more medical education. Thanks for joining us.